building an MPA that address that so that we don't lose them along the way. Because the last thing you want is an MPA without so much of a P in it. Um, so we engaged them and it took five years. We went through uh, a barangay resolution, which is the smallest unit of um, political unit in, in the island, get the councillors on board. Yes, we go through a bit of bureaucracy, but we brought the dive operator, the hotel to partly finance it, the fishermen to kind of bring themselves in. And what used to be a rock garden is now a marine protected area, home to over 100 species. That's about 31,000 square meters in size. And to come back there every year and see baby white tip sharks and sea horses is really encouraging. Um, the same mirror images in Fiji, where you speak to the Duvus and you speak to the districts and the atolls, and they tell you it's personal. It's not just economic. It's it's religious. It's cultural. I think this touches a little bit on what Sylvia was asking. Why can't we see it as a supermarket? Not just a supermarket. The ocean isn't. It really is just the right thing to do. And for us, it becomes very cultural. Again, because when you come to our hotels and our resorts, we want you to have a differentiated experience. So what we're looking at are indicators very briefly. Yes, you have an economic indicator, which is the use value, if you wish. The fish, the fish catch increase, consumption increase, how much your fishermen are willing to bring home or able to take home. But what we're trying to move into is a non-use value. Um, a non-use value has four indicators. The indirect value, obviously, which is just coastal protection. The option value, which is you can catch fish in the reef sometime in the near future. There's an option to come back to catching in the near future or in the medium term. There's also what I'd like to call a bequest value, that you can promise your next generation what they can see, that they can see the same species that our grandparents saw. And to tell that to the fishermen, that they can bring home the dollar value that they need, that their next generation can go and see it, that the next generation of travelers and holiday makers can see the same turtle species the size of these two tables combined. It really is adding a different guest experience. And lastly, I would say, is the existence value. For Fiji, Maldives, and Cebu, it's religious, it's cultural, it's traditional. You don't want to say that Fiji is now a land of bleach corals, because it isn't, and it shouldn't be. Fiji should be ridden with fish, should be ridden with corals, and we, end to, we intend to keep it that way. Three, three, I thought, three, three strong points there. One, um, when the private sector has a clear interest in uh, working to get these areas protected, it can do so. Um, alas, there aren't more examples. Yours is a classic case. People want to stay in your hotels to see reefs that we make sure there's some reefs to see. Uh, the other two points were how resilient nature is when you allow it to, to flourish and, and, and regrow. Um, and, and thirdly, of course, you must work with, with locals so that rules are um, sympathetic to, to them and their economic needs. Ramon, can you um, now pick up the issue a bit more broadly? 